Welcome to the Silver Snowflake Parkinson's Fall Prevention Webinar as presented by Claudia J. Lewis. This webinar is a collaboration between Translate Nursing LLC and the Edmund J. Sapper Visiting Nurse Faculty Program at the Parkinson's Disease Foundation. Claudia was originally born and raised in Poland. She came to the United States in 1999. While raising her daughter, she went to school for nursing. Her first nursing job was at the Lehigh Valley Health Network, where Claudia worked as a staff registered nurse on the neuroscience floor, and then was honored to be trained to work in their level one critical care unit. During this time, she never stopped learning. She went back to college at Drexel University and obtained her master's in nursing degree. In the course of going for her master's degree, she became a manager of an inpatient, fast-paced transitional care unit, then an assistant director of nursing. By leading people, she found her new passion for the education of the future generations of nursing, and she became a nurse faculty member at the University of Phoenix and later the University of Arizona. She is currently finishing her terminal degree as a PhD student of nursing with minor in public health at the University of Arizona and continued her passion as a researcher with a focus on neurological disorders and fall prevention with the utilization of complementary and holistic healing interventions. Please welcome our presenter, Mrs. Claudia J. Lewis. Thank you, John, for such a wonderful introduction. My name is Claudia Lewis, and welcome. I'm here today to present to you the Silver Snowflake Parkinson's Fall Prevention presentation. As many of you know, current evidence-based studies have shown that falls are common in Parkinson's disease. The clinical impact of falls is significant, often leading to debilitating fear of reoccurring falls. Costs associated with post-fall care are substantial. Falls are a serious problem among those with neurologic disorders like Parkinson. This growing concern was supported by recently collected statistical data in a state of the science paper written by Alan Schwartz and Kanigan in 2013. They reported that 60.5 Parkinson patients experience at least one fall and 39% reported reoccurring falls within one year period. Despite the fact the falls in Parkinson's patients are concerning and the cost of post-falls care is substantial, few if any clinical guidance has specifically addressed the prevention and interventional strategies for patients with Parkinson's disease. This is why the Silver Snowflake Preve Fall Prevention was created as an undergoing initiative to close the gap and to educate healthcare providers, patients, and their families about why the patients with Parkinson's are prone to falls and provide some intervention currently available to prevent falls in patients with Parkinson's disease. The objectives for today's presentations are to define Parkinson's disease, to identify Parkinson's disease symptoms, to understand which disease symptoms cause PD patients to be prone to falls, to recognize the five factors of dynamy, to define the three steps to prevent falls, to define four R's to further prevent falls, to understand what is Parkinson's Wellness Recovery Project, to understand what is Cayenne Partners for Life project and to utilize the resources to help patients stay safe at home. The curriculum for today's presentation consists of the introduction that we just concluded. Lecture two will be about the definition of Silver Snowflake Parkinson Fall Initiative. Lecture three, we will talk about facts and pathophysiology of Parkinson's disease. Lecture four, I will introduce you to causative symptoms of falls in PD patients. During lecture five, we will be discussing fall prevention and we will end up our presentation today with summary and references. Let's move on to lecture two. 
to discuss the definition of Silver Snowflake Parkinson Fall Initiative. As, as I mentioned to you before, despite the fact that falls in Parkinson's patient are concerning and the cost of post-falls care is substantial, few if any clinical guidance has specifically addressed the prevention and interventional strategies for patients with Parkinson's disease. This is why Parkinson's Fall Prevention Initiative was developed to educate healthcare providers, patients, and their families about why patients with PD are prone to falls and to provide some intervention currently available to prevent falls in patients with PD. All the educational materials provided during this initiative will be provided free of charge and available for every patient and every provider internationally. The free materials will include this presentation, poster and brochure, as well as website link that will have all the materials easily available in variety of languages. We also are recommending that anyone who wants to learn about how to prevent falls in patients with PD listens to today's presentation. As any initiative, this one also needs a mission statement. So our mission statement is to educate globally every patient and every provider about new research and interventions available to prevent falls in patients with PD, to internationally educate patients and families about the causative factors of falls in PD patients, and also existing modalities that could be utilized to minimize the risk of falling. We are planning to make this education materials free and available in other languages to raise global awareness. To streamline the process, we created implementation outline. By January 2015, we created a brochure available in English. In February 2015, we created a poster that was available in English. In April 2015, the presentation was created in English. In May to September, we are planning to translate the materials into Polish, Spanish and Russian. September to December, we are planning to continue translations of the material to German, Japanese, and Telog. And in 2016 to 2017, we are planning to continue the translations of the materials in other languages. Here is the picture of our free brochure available on our website. Here is the picture of our poster. And here is the screenshot of our presentation. Let's move on now to lecture three, which will be discussing facts about pathophysiology of Parkinson's disease. So why are we really interested in falls and Parkinson's disease? As I told you before, um, one of the state of the science paper reported that 60.5% of Parkinson's patients reported at least one fall and 39 reported reoccurring falls within a one year period. It's also estimated that approximately 1 million people in the United States and 7 to 10 million worldwide will live with PD. Each PD patient will experience symptoms differently. Parkinson's disease is also a chronic and very progressive movement disorder. The cause of PD is still unknown and there is no cure. So really, the treatment options are designed to manage the symptoms. Treat treatment options may include medication, surgery, physical activity, exercise, and an adaptive equipment. We should also talk today about pathophysiology of Parkinson's disease. Research is still undergoing to find out real cause of PD, but what we do know is that malfunction and death of the brain nerve cells called, called neuron in the area of brain called substantia nigra 
that is located in the brain just above the spinal cord and it's also one of the movement control centers. Those dying neurons in the brain has been used to distribute dopamine. Dopamine is a chemical that helps with communication of the brain that controls movement and coordination. Due to that, majority of the symptoms that patients with PD can experience are signs of motor symptoms, but they also are few that are non-motor related. As PD progresses, dopamine production may get reduced to as low as 20% and disable the PD patient to control movement normally. So please keep in mind that every single Parkinson disease patients, patient will experience symptoms differently. However, we do know that there are two different categories of symptoms, motor symptoms and non-motor symptoms. Let's talk about primary motor signs of PD. They include tremors of hands, arms, legs, jaw, and face, slowness of the movement or bradykinesia, rigidity or stiffness of the limbs and trunk, as well as postural instability or impaired balance and coordination. And then we have primary non-motor signs of PD. Few of them include loss of sense of smell, constipation, REM behavior disorder, a sleep disorder, mood disorders, as well as orthostatic hypotension, which is low blood pressure when standing up. We learn a little bit about prevalence of PD and basic symptoms, motor and non-motor of Parkinson's disease. Now let's talk about causative symptoms of falls in patients with PD. Many current evidence-based studies have shown that falls are common in Parkinson's disease. However, there is few that I would like to mention today. First is the paper that we have discussed before, written by Alan Schwartz and Carnegie. Second is the paper written in 2008 by Traman, Steven and Rao that states that falls are a major source of mobility and, mo and disability in Parkinson's disease. The risk of falls is increased in patients with PD. The paper written in 2012 by Colteras and Grandast discovered that the risk of falls increases exponentially with age. Patients older than 70 years old at the onset of Parkinson's disease experience falls significantly earlier than the younger patients. And last but not least, the paper written in 2015 by Amherst, Stuck, Fitton, Ashburn and Roberts discover that with median age of participants being 76 years old that are diagnosed with PD within six years, they found that 40 participants without cognitive impairment, 40% recalls falls, and 52-55% fail during the follow-up, and that 36 participants with mild cognitive impairment, 42 recall falls, and 42 fail during the follow-up. As you can see, the statistic is staggering. Why are the patients with PD are prone to falls then? As we have learned today, PD signs and symptoms may include motor signs and non-motor signs. But motor signs are the ones that are responsible for compromised stability and mobility in patients with PD. Those include stiffness, rigidity, and slow movement, bradykinesia, as well as posture changes such as freezing gait and stooped posture, impaired postural reflexes, that include postural inability or impaired balance and coordination, as well as weight distribution problem while walking. That is due to center of the mass being offset due again to stoop posture.
The above symptoms disturb the flow of five factors of dynamic that help patients maintain their stability and mobility principles and cause them to be prone to falls. We will discuss what dynatomy is in the next slide. So what is dynatomy? Not all of us really heard that word before. Dynatomy means dynamic human anatomy. This term was created by Whitening and Rod in 2016. In their book, titled Dynatomy, Dynamic Human Anatomy, they stress the importance of muscular motion rather than structural anatomy. Authors presented the five principles of dynamic dynatomy that are assisting the patient in maintaining their stability and mobility. Dynatomy studies the muscular motion of fundamental movements such as posture, walking, running, jumping, throwing, kicking, and lifting. You can see that this is really this definition really is fitting in with why our patients with Parkinson's are fall, prone to falls. We learned in a prior slide that stability and mobility of the patient is based on five principles of dynamic dynatomy, which studies the muscular motion of the most fundamental movements. I will now explain the five factors of dynatomy presented by writing and rugs that from medical me mechanical perspective are responsible for human levels of stability and mobility. Typically, we feel more stable when our feet are separate and less stable when they are closer together. By increasing the distance between the feet, we are increasing our base of support. Patients with PD have tendency to keep their feet closer together which in terms makes them less stable. This is represented by number one on the picture that I have created to help you understand the correlation between motor symptoms of PD and the five factors of dynatomy that are ultimately responsible for instability and lack of mobility in patients with PD. Number two is the height of the center of the gravity. Correct posture is erect which makes the height of the center further from the base of the support. But patient with PD has stooped posture that makes the height of the center closer to the base of the support. And once again, it makes, it makes them less stable. Number three represents the location of the center of the gravity. Correct human posture will have the center of the gravity located perpendicular to our base of the support, which means our head is located above our feet. In patient with PD, this factor is also compromised due to patient leaning forward towards the ground. Number four represents the body mass or a body weight distribution when walking. Normally, we are able to lift our feet and position them evenly while distributing our weight on our feet. Patient with PD most likely will drag the feet across and due to rigidity and tremors, as well as freezing gait, they will be unable to distribute the weight evenly on their feet. And lastly, number five, represent the friction. Friction usually will help us maintain the stability as having a good shoes with rubber sole will help you to remain stable. But in case of patients with PD, they experience additional friction that is caused by PD rigidity, freezing gait, as they try to move their feet and walk, they apply additional friction. That is also making them prone to falls. Most patients with PD falls because of the above mentioned disease symptoms that compromise five factors of dynatomy but other risks should be considered. For example, the history of prior falls can make patients more prone to falling and most likely they will fall again. Also, recent surgery can also hinder them from maintaining their stability and mobility, as well as medication. It is very essential as a healthcare provider to review the medications as some of them 
can cause patients to be more prone to falls. A person home that is not adapted for PD needs. For example, insufficient lighting in a house, lack of the grab bars and non-skip tape in a tub or a shower, clutter, or a lack of an open space while ambulating can make the patient to be scared while walking, as well as small animals running around the house. They create a hazard as they can cause patient to fall as well. So what can we do to prevent falls? How can we help? Well, the first step is to educate yourself on what causes PD patients to be more prone to falls, which we did today. The second step is to talk to your patients or family members about exercises that can increase their, their stability and mobility. And the third step would be to emphasize the need of exercising regularly as research proves that several different exercise systems can help prevent falls. The key word here is exercising re regularly as this will help to maintain that stability and mobility longer. Some exercises program that have been proven to help include Tai Chi, Kui Guan, balance exercise and leg strengthening exercise. What else can be done to prevent falls in patients with PD? I would like to, you to remember four R's. Remove, review, recommend and refer. Remove. Educate them to remove throw racks, make sure the floor is even, remove loose cords and clutter, make sure the lighting is adequate and provide an open space to improve mobility. Review. If you are a healthcare provider, make sure to review patient's medication. By reducing polypharmacy and medications that can cause falling, you're helping your patient to stay home safely. R. Recommend home safety assessment by either visiting nurse on occupational therapy or suggest a service animal. Both of them can be very essential for patients with Parkinson's disease. Refer, consult the physical therapy that specializes in Parkinson's. How can you find a physical therapist that, you, that specializes in Parkinson's disease? Well, let me introduce you to Parkinson's Wellness Recovery Project. Parkinson's Wellness Recovery Project was started by Dr. Farley after years of research that she saw compelling data that prove that exercise has serious benefit for people living with Parkinson's. She then teamed up with Sally Mitchell, physical therapist, and officially started to increase the availability of PD-specific research-based exercise that adheres to exercise for brain change principles of practice. Dr. Farley and Sally opened the PWR gym and the Neuroscience Center of Excellence in Tucson, Arizona. Since 2010, PWR has trained over 3,000 professionals in how to implement PD-specific exercise and has treated over 600 people through their exercise program in Tucson, Arizona. To find a physical therapist that specialize in Parkinson's in your area, please visit the website or link given to you or provided below. Another excellent idea to prevent falls with patients with PD is to provide them with the service, service dog. The organization that, it's help, that would help you find or, or provide you with a service dog is called KN Partners for Life. CPL. CPL is a nonprofit 501 organization dedicated to training dogs, home companion dogs, and residential companion dogs to assist individuals who have a wide range of physical cognitive disabilities. Service dogs can help patients with balance and mobility, difficulty losing their hands and arms, or the people patients that have fatigue issue. CPL primary uses a 
Labrador Retrievers as the service dogs, but they also utilize Golden Retrievers, Poodle, Poodles and Labradoodles. Poodles are recommended for patients with dog allergies. I can share with you that I have experience in one of the um, group support. Patients with Parkinson brought their service dog and it was amazing what and how much help service dog can provide for a patient that is, that ha that is struggling with Parkinson's. They can get your phone for you, they learn special command for that. They can open the doors. Um, they can help you take your socks off your feet. They can pick up objects from the floor for you. If you have a home alert button, they can be taught to um, press that button in the case of emergency. And many, many other wonderful um, things that are very helpful and essential for patients with Parkinson's. For more information about this wonderful program, please visit the website below. I provided you with a lot of information, information today, so let's summarize. Let's remember, falls can be avoided. If you educate your patients and their families, they can stay home longer and remain independent. They can avoid unnecessary contusions and injuries related to falls. They can stay home longer with their families and loved ones and live the highest quality of life possible. Please, hang the poster and the brochure in a visible place so your patient can use them as an additional resource. Visit our website for posters and brochure or contact me if you would like me to provide you with those resources. As I promised you on the beginning of today's presentation, here is the resource slide that contains several modalities that are currently available to assist and help patients to remain home safer and longer and hopefully prevent falls. Please don't hesitate to visit our website, translatenursing.org, if you would wish to um, get free posters or, or brochures as well as um, contact me for further questions. Here is the slide with our references. Thank you very much for allowing me to come here and present to you this um, wonderful Silver Snowflake Parkinson Fall Prevention Initiative. And again, please don't hesitate to contact me if you have any questions. Thank you so very much and have a wonderful day.